Welcome back, Gromies. Today, I'm going to show you how to make Jadam Sulfur. Now, first off, we're going to start off with the materials list that you need. You're going to need about 2.5 liters of water with an additional 1.6 liters of water. You're going to need a little bit of sea salt for minerals. You're going to need sodium hydroxide, aka lye. And you're also going to need powdered sulfur, 100% elemental powdered sulfur, um, some gloves, a wooden stir stick, a temperature resistant bucket, a scale, and a infrared thermometer doesn't um, hurt. Now as for the sea salt, we're only going to use uh, about three grams of it. Um, we're only using the sea salt for a little bit boost of uh, mineral content in the Jadam sulfur solution. To give it uh, not only a pesticidal and fungicidal um, activity, but maybe give it a little bit of uh, feeding the microbes to it. Next up, we're gonna weigh out the um, sulfur, but first I'm gonna put on some gloves. Now the sulfur itself isn't very dangerous, it just, uh, you know, it can smell like sulfur. But the um, sodium hydroxide or lye is kind of dangerous. If you do get it on your skin, it will um, do a chemical burn on your skin. And, and if you do get it on your skin, immediately go inside and get some canola oil or vegetable oil and um, wash the area that you got the uh, lye on with that and then wash it with soap and water. The uh, vegetable oil or coconut oil will um, start to be emulsified by the lye instead of uh, the oils in your skin. Now we're going to lay out approximately 2.76 pounds of sulfur. We got one pound of sulfur. Now it is important in the um, order of operations in which you put the materials in the bucket. You definitely want to put in the sulfur first and the sodium hydroxide later. The sodium hydroxide is what makes the heat rise and um, be able to melt this sulfur into a solution. There's two pounds. Now we just need 7.6 ounces. Now it's extremely important that we weigh all these ingredients out and uh, measure the liquid ingredients out uh, pretty closely because this is what's going to determine the final result of around 25% um, sulfur solution. Now I'm going to change the modes on this and tear the scale out to uh, weigh the lye. Now, the lye comes in, or sodium hydroxide comes in these child um, protective bottles, at least the one that I got, and they happen to be already pre-weighed out into two pound um, intervals. So we're looking for 2.2 pounds, so I'm just gonna use one entire one of these bottles and uh, pour that in. As you can see, it says 2.2, or two pounds on it, exactly. And then I'm going to weigh out a little bit more of the sodium hydroxide or lye to get the 
Now adding that additional little bit of lye in. Make sure you cover up these uh, sodium hydroxide containers so they don't spill. I'm just gonna pick up the area a little bit before we uh, move on to add in the water. If there's any additional ingredients left on the scale, wipe that off into the bucket. And now for one of the more dangerous steps, we're gonna be adding the water to the sodium hydroxide and sulfur. Now when you go to add the water, you're gonna to wanna to add the water all at once. And um, immediately after you add all the water, you're gonna to wanna to start um, stirring with the wooden stir stick that you have. If you do wanna go metal, you have to go stainless steel, otherwise it will corrode the metal and it will rust that metal. Now, as you can see, as the, the water entered into the bucket, the temperature started increasing quite rapidly. And this is the reaction that we're hoping for because this is what's gonna melt the sulfur into solution. Now, during this process, you don't really want it to go above boiling. You don't want it to boil really at all. So you're gonna wanna have a bucket of water aside that's on the, you know. So you're gonna wanna have a little bit of water aside that you can add to it as you're stirring to keep the temperature down if it starts climbing too high. Now this process does take around 15 to 20 minutes of uh, stirring and making sure that none of the sulfur sticks to the bottom. Uh, watching the heat. As you can see, as a few minutes has gone by, um, this is turning quite dark red, and you can't quite see the, the powdered sulfur anymore, and the temperature is really getting up there. I'm gonna pour a little bit of water in there so it doesn't reach that 212, but it maintains a, a really hot temperature. Now as I'm stirring this, I'm gonna go over a few things that you can use um, Jadam Sulfur for. It's really great and effective against powdery mildew. It's really effective against uh, aphids and soft body insects. Um, it's also really effective against many of the different uh, diseases that happen to attack many different plants. Uh, tomato rot, all kinds of different things. And sulfur, the Jadam Sulfur and sulfur in general um, insects and diseases don't build up resistance to. Now, just like with any of the um, preparations that we do, you are going to want to dilute the Jadam sulfur. Now, for each crop, you're going to want to dilute it a, a little bit differently. Some crops are a little bit more sensitive than others. So you're definitely going to want to make a, a, a small touch so you're definitely gonna wanna make a small test batch and spray it on a small section of your plant and see how that um, responds. And if it responds favorably, that, that's the correct dilution. But a good starting point is one to 500. Now you're also going to wanna mix this with the Jadam wetting agent. 
to get a good uh, coverage of the Jadam Sulfur Solution. And this can also be mixed in with the Jadam Herbal Solution for a full uh, pesticidal and insecticidal and disease spray. Now this is a really great spray to combat and prevent a lot of different things, but you're definitely not going to want to spray this in flower at any point in time. It will harm the pistols and it's just, just like with any other spray, it's not recommended to be spraying during flowering. Now, like I said, you want to continue to mix this the entire time that it's warm, honestly. Um, you can take small little breaks, but you want to make sure that while it's hot, you mix it really, really well so that all the sulfur um, from the bottom of the bucket and everywhere inside the solution gets mixed in very well. Right now it's cooling down quite a bit compared to what it was uh, when the initial first reaction started. As you can see there's no steam really coming off it as much. And it's cooled down quite a bit. Now what you're going to want to do is let this cool down all the way. Um, set it aside. Let it cool down all the way. And <clears throat> then you're going to want to uh, pour it out into several different containers. Now, you can use plastic containers, but you got to make sure that they're heat resistant containers. And I recommend glass containers. I have a crap load of mason jars laying around. Uh, most of us do. So if you have a bunch of mason jars laying around, I'd recommend storing it in mason jars. Now you can see that I've, after I've stored it in mason jars and I've waited around 24 hours or so, sometimes it takes maybe two days, you can see that a lot of uh, different part uh, particles have precipitated down and uh, are on a layer at the bottom of this containers. And that's all the um, you know, different minerals and impurities that could not get into the solution. And what you're going to want to do is um, either pour off the top and try to separate those particles or let, what I like to do is I like to set up a funnel with a little coffee filter and filter out those particles. Now you can make genome sulfur with just the sodium hydroxide or lye and uh, sulfur without the sea salt and you'll get less of that precipitate. And you can also make Jadam Sulfur with a few more ingredients um, called Fiolite Powder and Red Clay Powder. And both of those are um, for the same reason as the sea salt is for added mineral content and the clay powder helps um, penetration of the insecticidal into uh, soft body insects. Now this process does take a little bit when you're filtering out with a coffee filter, but it's well worth it. And um, when you do get done, you'll see that you have this really bright red clear solution and that's exactly what you're looking for. Like I said before, Jadam Sulfur is really great for a multitude of um, insecticidal or pest and disease problems, including you know aphids, mites, russet mites, powdery mildew, tomato rot. Uh, when you, if you grow peppers, you might have seen this one before, but it has the, uh, the pepper rot where certain sections of the pepper is just rotting for what seems to be like no reason. That's a, unfortunately a disease that you can uh, 
treat with the Jadam Sulfur and save your pepper crop if you do grow peppers. Now after you do filter it all out and it's all separated, you have Jadam Liquid Sulfur solution. And now when you're all done and you have it filtered out, you have Jadam Sulfur Solution. Thanks for watching, Gromies. Make sure you check out the links in the description. I'm going to have the Jadam Pest and Disease Control book and the Jadam Organic Farming book down below if you want to learn even more about these things and support the creator of these solutions. And have a great one, Gromies.